Good day, everyone. Happy Sunday. I hope you're having a nice festive weekend. Not really so much of a great weekend for our friend the Turks after yesterday's embarrassing loss to the First Crusade. Today, it's also the Independence Day of Albania, who declared its independence from the Ottoman Empire 109 years ago. So, since we are in this celebratory mood, let's also celebrate all the people who correctly bet on the right 50% uh, from yesterday, because today we do indeed have our video about the range DPS and their use of double legendary. Just exactly how excited you should be for your class or spec coming for 9.2. Should you already be in panic mode? Should you already be looking for other specs to play? Because, um, well, you know, the synergy, uh, looking ahead, uh, the power of being able to use two legendaries for your spec is looking awful. So you already know your spec is doomed and you're planning to just ditch the whole thing to play something else. Or maybe you are excited because you know you think you have been told that your spec is in a very good place for 9.2. Maybe you have two killer legendaries you can't wait to use together, and even your tier sets look nice, so everything looks uh, bright inside of the game, except for most of the game itself, but that's another, that, that's another point we won't touch today. Today we're just here to look at the synergy and power of the two legendaries being wielded by ranged DPS with, as usual, a you know tiny little mention of tier sets and how they might improve, how they might make the combination of legendaries stronger, perhaps if they might even open up different um, avenues for your spec to play uh, different type of setups. We are going to have to start as usual with the bad ones first, moving our way, climbing our way to the top, to the better legendaries. By this point, you already know <laughs> if you are using already a Covenant Legendary, you are much more likely to be in a very good situation in 9.2, because this means you have an ample option, an ample uh, choice for all of your other Legendaries, since your Covenant one is the one you're forced to use, if it's your best in slot, you're in a great spot right now. So when we start our list for the worst specs right now, when it comes to possible synergy, it is to no surprise of anyone that the specs at the bottom are going to have very little synergy with their Covenant Legendaries. So, the ones we find at the bottom are Demonology and Destruction. This reason is the following. We have pointed out multiple times how all of the Warlock specs were perennially stuck as Nightfae. Even now that they have the option to freely respec to other Covenants, they are still just playing Nightfae. This is a problem because not only are they still playing Nightfae, but the Covenant Legendary for Nightfae is shit for these specs. Both don't really want to play with the decaying soul satchel. They both have, they both wished they could use a couple of their legendaries together without having to go to the Covenant ones because they have much better synergy. Unfortunately, that is not possible. They have to choose a Covenant legendary. The situation is so bad that even if these two specs have been staying Nightfae for most of the expansion, they might be pushed this time to actually move away just to find a better Covenant Legendary that isn't the Decaying Soul Satchel. In the case of Destruction, they were playing all of them most of the time with the Cinders of the Ajakir. This is the premier Legendary of Destro that makes them look like they are a functioning spec. It smoothens the rotation, it makes it more fluid and, and faster to play, so it's a very nice Legendary, but it does absolutely nothing with the Covenant Legendary itself. The same goes for Demonology. Demonology is playing with Wilfred's Sigil, because the only thing a Demonology Warlock cares about is their Tyrant. So, they want a Legendary that allows them to use the Tyrant more often. Again, the Cain Soul Satchel doesn't do too much when you put this with this legendary. Now, there is a respite, however, for these two specs. While their combination of legendary looks awful, if we were to make a basically a rating, a ranking of tier sets, both of these specs tier sets are amongst the strongest at the moment. Yes, yes, balance tuning will be on the way, some tweaking is gonna happen, but for the moment, you can hope that the tier sets stay as they are, in which case they would be extremely powerful. Basically, it would be offsetting the weakness of their legendary combos. But as far as just the synergy between two different legendaries, they are pretty bad at the moment. Now, following these two Warlock specs, we also have the entire package of Mage. The problem with Mage, every single one of them, is the fact that none of them even wants to get remotely close to the Covenant legendaries. 
Fire mages are splitting their time between disciplinary command for single target and Sun King's blessing for AoE. They would much rather use them together if they could and not use this piece of shit Heart of the Fae for Night Fae. Getting you a buff that grants you critical strike chance when you want to use combustion, which already guarantees you to have 100% crit chance is nonsensical. It's not really a very powerful buff to use as a legendary, especially compared to the other things Fire Mage could have gotten. So this is a very bad spot to be a fire mage for because this legendary is not going to give you too much power the same can be said for arcane arcane is pretty much playing everywhere with arcane harmony but they could also have some other extra interesting picks in their legendary arsenal unfortunately they have to play with a covenant legendary in this case likely being kyrian they have to play with harmonic echo which not only it's a weak covenant legendary but it is also zero dps in single target so this is a tragic legendary for arcane to the point that they might even move away to this pick and go to a different covenant but the question is going to be which one because frost mage is also in a pretty bad situation when it comes to covenant options because they are splitting their time between ventir for single target and night Fae, just like fire mages for aoe for mythic plus frost mage is also using one legendary for everything which is freezing winds which is very powerful they also would rather like use this together with other legendaries like slick eyes for single target or glacial fragments for aoe unfortunately they have to play with ventir covenant legendary like sinful delight which is not very powerful of the three mage specs if we wanted to see one you know to be slightly ahead it would be frost because frost can play night Fae, is already playing night Fae in mythic plus and they can actually benefit from the heart of the Fae covenant legendary a little bit more than the other two specs they are not as bound by big huge cooldowns so this you know this extra tiny little buff that heart of the fake can give them is going to be more effective for them but still not very good some slight positive reactions if we have to look at the tier sets as well because at the very least arcane gets a pretty decent help with their tier sets then you have frost mage which looks like you know probably the, the worst one of the three so it's it's sort of like a counterbalance they, they probably have the better combination of legendaries and the worst of the tier sets and then you have fire mage who has the worst possible combination of legendaries but also the best the very strong tier set bonuses so it is starting to look likely that maybe blizzard had this in mind maybe blizzard was balancing the tier sets together with the legendary combinations maybe but for the moment, mages are not looking too hot when it comes to legendary combinations. Now we go from not looking hot to looking warm, okay? Comfy. Not really hot, not really scorching hot, but, you know, it's, we're starting to get there. And that's with Elemental Shaman. So Elemental Shaman's primarily playing Night Fae and a little bit of Necrolord, but with the Covenant legendary usage, it's very likely they will go almost permanently away from Necrolord because of how bad the Necrolord uh, Covenant Legendary is, it's with using Seeds of Rampant Growth, which is going to give them significant cooldown reduction on their Fire Elemental and extra critical strike chance. This is decent because it synergizes very well with your tier sets. Elemental Shaman tier set is all going to be focusing the cooldown reduction as well as the power of your Elementals. So the Covenant Legendary is going to play a good part in what it looks like is going to be a permanent Elemental for the Elemental Shaman to use. Now, they are not higher than this, however. They are sort of in the middle because it's not that the Covenant and the Legendary synergy is, is too great. They will likely continue to use Wind Speaker's Lava Resurgence if it's single target and Echoes of Great Sundering if it's AoE. There are possible niche alternative possibilities with things like Skybreakers to even further empower this Elemental style of play but for the moment even with the legendaries they are already using it is decent we will have to see more how it benefits and how it synergizes with the tier set bonuses which do look promising but for now we are staying conservative about elemental another spec that is sort of in the middle but for completely different reasons is shadow priest so what's the thing about shadow priest now we are starting to get a little bit warmer sure but not too excited why shadow priest does have their most used legendary as a covenant legendary well hold on a second you thought me that if you have a covenant legendary as your best in slot one you were going to be off to a great start in 9.2 isn't it doesn't that mean that you can now choose whichever other legendary you want to pair with it true shadow priests are using palette command 
Shadow Priests are Necolord, they are using the Necolord Covenant Legendary and they will be able to pair it together with whatever else they want. Shadow Flame Prism for more AoE or even single target since most of the time it's been used in there as well, even going to Talbadar Swatagem, etc etc. The main issue with Shadow Priest is that their tier set bonuses are very counterintuitive and clunky to use. They are effectively making your playstyle worse your rotation worse, they are putting even more importance on your mind flay. As we go by, as we get deeper and deeper in the scaling of your characters, Shadow Priest has less and less time, less and less GCDs to be able to cast mind flay, and you have now tier set bonuses that will even further empower this mind flay that you don't really want to use, which is going to make it quite clunky to, 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 to make it work. So they have gotten past the half of the range DPS, they are towards the top half, because they do, at the end of the day, still have a very good Covenant Legendary, so they can better move around with choosing any one of their other Legendaries, but for the moment, if we also put into account their tier set bonuses, it's, it's not looking too strong, importantly, when it comes to AoE. The tier set bonuses and your Covenant double use is going to give you a pretty significant increase in single target, but basically zero DPS increase in AoE. So maybe if you are one of those guys who like to basically funnel into one style of play, who likes to be very strong in one type of damage area, but shit at everything else, this will still be very good for you. Outside of these type of players, there are still a few problems with the situation for Shadow Priest. Now that we have gotten into the top half, the top four, we have to enter and begin the top four with Hunters. And we're starting with Beast Mastery. So, Beast Mastery Hunter is using a Covenant Legendary. It is the Fragments of the Elder Antlers for Night Fape. It is very good, to the point that even if you use it on more than four targets where it's not gonna proc, over the course of the Mythic Plus Dungeon, for example, it is still going to overperform any other option you could have used. That's how uh, well it is performing right now. So considering Beast Mastery Hunters already had a very good multi-purpose, all types of damage profile type of legendary, which was Rylax Stalkers, Piercing Fangs, now that you can pair it together with the fragments, you're going to be doing very well. You shouldn't complain about any of this. What makes this even better is that there is also good synergy on the set bonuses of Beast Mastery Hunter, which is another reason why they make it into the top four. It's not just the good use, the strong use of a Covenant Legendary, but also the powerful tier set bonuses for Beast Mastery. So they are definitely chilling nicely. We are starting to get into a very hot temperature at the moment. Temperature being a little bit higher for marksmanship. Because while the two hunter specs are close, marksmanship is getting a little bit of an extra power up. Because marksmanship, what a surprise, is also Night Fae and is also using and benefiting a lot from the fragments of the Elder Antlers legendary. Now, not as much as Beast Mastery, sure. Marksmanship Hunters can still use and prefer, over this Covenant Legendary, Surging Shots for AoE and Serpent Stalker's Trickery for single target, which is going to even out very nicely. You can simply now use them together whenever you want to AoE or single target. That is going to come out really nicely. So not only they start with a very nice baseline of possible legendary combos, they also have very powerful tier set bonuses. Because the two-piece set bonus making you have a 30% more damage when you are affected by trick shots for your next ability, it's very good just by default in AoE. Your next ricochet off of trick shots is just going to do more AoE damage, so you're just going to become stronger in AoE. That's decent. What is also even better, significantly, possibly even cataclysmically better, is the 4-piece set bonus. The fact that when you spend 80 focus you gain 2 charges of trick shots. This is massive for hunters because they don't have a way to gain trick shots when they are fighting less than 3 targets. So, on a single boss, or on a boss with an ad, for example, they can never proc trick shots. This set bonus is going to allow them to proc trick shots even on single target fights, even on boss fights. This is going to benefit them because their two-piece set bonus is giving them 30% more damage to their next ability once they trigger trick shots, which totals out to just more single target damage. There are also very other good synergies, for example Volley, the talent for Hunter, which is never used of course in single target, now becomes actually a legitimate pick in single target because it does give you trick shots. And now with your set bonuses, trick shots also works in single target. This type of synergy is strong enough that might even make Hunters change types of legendaries to even better synergize with this, or perhaps they might even change Covenant. 
because this empowerment of their single target might gain more benefit from going Venthyr. Venthyr is already the theorized, on paper, sim crafted, best possible single target DPS that hunters have. Maybe this patch is going to give the, the final push to these hunter specs. We already talked about survival and how they might even more likely go to Venture for single target. Perhaps it's going to be the case for marksmanship as well. Now that we have gone through the two hunter specs, we are entering lava hot territory. The top two specs for the range DPS when it comes to synergy and power of their legendary combinations, starting with Affliction Warlock in second place. Affliction Warlock is far and above the other two poor Warlock specs. While all three of them are using Nightfed, there is one of them who is actually using and is actually doing quite well with the Covenant Legendary, which is Affliction with the Cain Soul Satchel. So, of course, when you are a spec who is already using the Covenant Legendary, this means that now you can choose whatever you want for whatever activity you want to play. In the case of Affliction, they can use Wilfred's Sigil. They can also use, more likely, Malefic Wrath, which was their previous used Legendary before this uh, Covenant-specific one was introduced. That is pretty much the main difference between them and the other two Warlock specs, because just like Demonology and Destruction, Affliction does also have great synergy with the tier sets, because being able to extend the duration of your dots to allow you to cast other stuff that isn't the boring menial task of refreshing your dots every tot seconds, now that you have more time to cast other stuff, you can, for example, benefit more from casting and continuing to channel Drain Soul to get the procs of your free Malefic Rapture. And because now you have two legendaries, you can play with Malefic Wrath to give you even more damage to your Drain Soul, which you will be casting more because you don't have to refresh your dots as much. So it is a very nice synergy. They can line it up the best of the other two Warlock specs when it comes to their one minute cooldown of Soul Rot. So Affliction is currently in the better spot when it comes to the other Warlock specs and even, even to most of the other range DPS specs. I am saying most because one is missing, and the missing one is, of course, Balanced Druid. So with Balanced Druid being here, we are going to finish this uh, list of all of the different classes and specs with this uh, rating of their synergy with Guardian Druid being second, perhaps tied first with Protection Paladin, and then Feral Druid being second, perhaps tied first with Retribution Paladin, and then Restoration Druid right behind Mr. Vermonk in second place. And now we have Balance in first. So yeah, I'm gonna go on a limb here and say that Druids are the one that are gaining the most out of the synergy of their legendary usage. To absolutely nobody's surprise, the reason why Balance is here is because their best in slot legendary is the Ravenous Frenzy synergistic pick of Ventir. Sinful Hysteria. So using Sinful Hysteria as a base is going to allow them to have all of the possible different theory crafting choices on what to follow up that very powerful legendary. They could go with Primordial Arcanic Pulsar to get even more Celestial Alignments coming out. They could also go for something like Time Worn Dream Binder. This is further strengthened by their tier set bonuses, which are not weak at all. They are not the absolute best because the two-piece set bonus isn't great, but the four-piece set bonus, reducing the cost of Star Surge and Starfall inside of Eclipse, is very powerful. It becomes even more powerful when you can use two legendaries and you can pair it together with some synergistic picks like Time War and Dreambinder. With this and the four-piece set bonus, you are discounting your Star Surge by 40%. You're going to be able to squeeze some three extra, perhaps even four extra star surges every full bar of Astro Power, so it becomes very, very powerful, not to mention the legendary itself also increases the damage by 20%. So there is some exponential power in play here for balance, because not only are they going to have some pretty good Covenant and normal legendary being put together, not, not only that, but it's also going to synergize with their set bonuses, and they are also one of the better performing ranged DPS specs right now, which makes it even more crucial for them to be in such a good spot when it comes to Covenant and legendary options for 9.2. It is, I would say, quite clearly the strongest of the gaps from the first place and the second place that we have seen compared to all of the other roles, the ones that we see in the range DPS camp. So it's going to be interesting to see how it develops as we get closer to 9.2. 
Fortunately, for the desperate people who are already weeping at the state of their spec, there are very good chances that it is going to be tuned and fixed before it goes live. And unfortunately, for the people who are raving and very excited at the possible powers of these combinations, well, yeah, they might also be tuned and uh, reworked before 9.2 goes live, making them much less powered, perhaps even much less overpowered. So, for the time being, this is how the range DPS scenario of double legendary is looking, coming closer to 9.2 which means that for the time being we can stop here have a good rest of the weekend a good sunday and whatnot if you're watching this and it's not sunday then you can role play and wait until next sunday to watch it properly that being said that being said thank you as usual for watching the video and connecting with yours truly if you want to continue supporting the channel you can leave a like on the video you can comment down below how excited you are about the possible options for your classes and specs double legendary or perhaps how doomed you think your spec is going to be in 9.2 and you can also of course subscribe to the channel if you want to leave a little bit of an extra support this way see you guys soon and in the meantime okay thanksgiving is over 9.2 ptr should come live i'm gonna bet before thursday we should see it